So uh, again, the male competition thing is is interesting. Uh, it definitely pops up more um, within uh, again patriarchal kind of uh, primate groups. Um, there's some interesting things that happen around some of this. Uh, males living in their natal group tend to have less uh, sexual dimorphism. So the idea here is that males that stay living with their uh, siblings and mom and dad that aren't going off and kind of creating their own, um, they tend to have be less um, differences between uh, male and female body structure and size, um, which is which is fascinating, right? Like that 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 is correlated. Uh, perfectly in the primate world. Um, humans have the longest lifespans and are the only primates that have baby booms in a given population. So this is an interesting thing, right? Where we're humans actually go through this time period where uh, lots of people generationally have a lot of kids at the same time. Um, other primate groups do not do that. Um, and ours obviously is related to the fact that resources for us um, are simply scalable at this point. All right, uh, primate residency patterns. Um, polygonous uh, is the idea of uh, one male and multiple females, polygynous. Um, so a lot of people probably have heard of more polygamy in this way. Polygamy just means uh, one spouse with multiple other sp uh, spouses. Um, so in terms of polygonous, we're really looking at, or polygynous, we're really looking at one male and multiple females. Polyandrous is one uh, reproductively active female and multiple males. Um, and then there's multi-male, multi-female. There's all male residency patterns. And, and remember, residency is who you live with. And then there's one male, one female. So there's monogamous groups as well. Um, and then solitary, um, solitary individuals. Sometimes, usually it's solitary males. Um, What's interesting about this is that um, humans organize, again, in these primate uh, residency patterns as well. Uh, we probably all have um, examples of, of maybe people that are um, in kind of the, the hang out in all male groups. Remember, this is residency patterns, right? Um, so not necessarily kind of mating patterns, but then mating does uh, Kind of correlate in the primate world to to this structure as well, right? Um, but there are even human groups that are polyandrous, right? Um, where there's one uh, wife and multiple husbands. So again, kind of fascinating that that humans kind of occupy these residencies as well. Um, reproductive strategies and cooperation, sexual selection. This comes up a lot. Uh, frequency of traits that change due to those traits' attractiveness to members of the opposite sex. Um, sexual Sexual selection kind of could be that, you know, fifth or sixth uh, force of evolution, uh, aside from mutual aid, um, gene flow, genetic drift, mutation, and natural selection. Um, and again, this has to do with like the group's belief in what is beautiful, essentially, ethnoasceticism. Um, infanticide is the term um, used when talking about killing of a juvenile um, or an infant. Um, and this does happen in primate groups, uh, especially male dominated primate groups uh, like chimps. When chimps, when the dominant male chimp suspects that a female has had another male's baby, um, sometimes uh, that chimp will, will resort to this. Um, altruistic behaviors or altruistic uh, uh, motivation or the, the altruism itself is... Um, the idea of benefiting others while being a disadvantage to the individual. Um, again, altruism is the idea of maybe self-sacrifice to some degree, uh, where you know if somebody else needs to eat and you're hungry too, you feed that person. That's an altruistic behavior. It doesn't make a lot of sense in the biological world. Um, animals that are run on instinct, like your uh, alligator or crocodile, that I, I don't know that I've ever seen any instances of them uh, showing empathy. Um, or altruistic behavior. Um, so yeah, so this is a, a primate thing for sure. And I think there's a good example, I'm pretty sure in the lemur video that I, that I signed, um, and that empathy piece, right? Uh, kin selection, uh, again, altruistic behavior more towards kin groups. So there's a lot of, uh, 
essentially the idea here is that um, individuals are more likely to self-sacrifice when they are related to that group, um, when, when one's posterity or pro progeny is, is kind of being passed down. Um, food and culture, foraging for food can take up to 50% of waking time for primates. Um, again, it, it can take some groups, the food is right there and they don't really worry about it, right? You've probably seen um, gorillas or chimps just kind of laying in the trees and just pulling off branches and eating leaves as they lay there. Um, so again, this would be considered foraging, but I'm not necessarily considering that, that like an extreme version of life, right? Um, quality distribution availability, um, obviously food, uh, needs to be quality, um, where it's distributed and its availability is also key to gathering that food. Um, primates use bodies and, uh, humans use material culture. And what I mean by this is that, uh, we like to create tools, invent tools, technology, whatever you want to call it. Um, humans really like this. And when you look at, when you watch the, uh, Ape Genius video, you'll realize that they actually use tools as well. Um, however, they're, uh, primates, uh, the majority of the time use their bodies and are not creating tools. Uh, chimps do use tools, twigs for termites, fishing. Uh, they, they make spears. Um, they use stone, stones to crack nuts. Um, and then there's macaws that even more washing their food off. Um, uh, some macaws will drop nuts and other things in the road so the cars run over them. Um, this is fascinating because also ravens and crows do this similar behavior in the bird kingdom. Um, the young observe the elders using knowledge transfer and culture passing. This is also very, very key. The idea here is that um, primates uh, watch their parents and then mimic. So mimicry is one of those first things that we learn. Um, and if we said that humans had an instinct, this is one of those instincts, right? Which is essentially the first stage to learn is mimicry. Um, and then we're, we're, it's a fascinating thing that, that, that primates, all primates do it. Humans do it at, at the younger infancy level. Uh, primate communication is rich and complex. Vocal systems is a picture of a howler monkey. Um, they have like very large hyoid bones. Um, they're very loud, um, throughout the jungle. I've been exposed to howler monkeys doing their song and dance for sure. Um, Scientists have documented and categorized um, and tried to contextualize, and then they like play back in the forest now. So they're recording them and they're messing with the sounds and they're playing them back to uh, these different primates, especially like howler monkeys. And what they're finding out is that their humans were not able to pick up the tones, but they're now able to like communicate and see that they're actually what we used to think was, you know, that they were alert, right? And that's the only sound that they made. So like howler monkey for, sh for sure, anytime you walk into the forest, they're, they're doing their thing. They're doing their grunts and their, their calls. And we just heard them in one tone. Um, and we just assumed, oh, look at, there's a man coming. There's a man coming. And that's what they're telling their, their friends and neighbors, right? Up in the trees. Um, but essentially, uh, linguists, like it's moving into primate linguists, but they have broken it down to then say, no, actually what they're saying is, uh, no, the guy with the red hat and the blue shirt essentially is coming towards you, right? And he has a weapon. So they're, they're, they have complicated language. We're just barely, barely starting to scratch the surface of this structure. And I think it's very important to, to realize, um, that we're past the point of thinking that primates do not have language. Um, and, and that they just bark and, and then they're like, you know, your dog or your cat and, and to be honest, dogs and cats probably have complex language. We just haven't even started to break those things down. Um, chimps definitely have specific grunts for different scenarios. Um, again, they could be acoustically, but they're hard to hear for us. And then great apes can all learn American Sign Language um, and use symbols to communicate with humans, which is, again, kind of an upper level system. All right, that's uh, all for the week, folks. Hope you have a great week.